Hello, here in this video we're going to talk about the midpoint of a line segment. So we're going to get away from talking about lines that travel for infinite amounts in each direction and we're going to talk about a line segment, just a piece of a line and finding the midpoint of it. You may have seen my previous video on calculating the distance of a line segment and these two sort of go hand in hand. It is recommended that you know things like slope, y equals mx plus b, the equation of a line, that sort of thing. Now before we get into the midpoint of a line segment, let's talk about just finding the midpoint between two values. So if I had the value of 6 and the value of 18, how would we find the magic number that is between these? And the magic number between those is called the median. And the easiest way to get halfway between two items is to count if we were on a number line. But in this case, the numbers are pretty far apart and it might not be that obvious. And it gets a little bit more complicated when the values are something like 6.5 and 8.7. But let's just stick with whole numbers for now. So how do we get the midway point between two values? We use this all the time when we have our marks on two tests, let's say you got 70% on one test and 80% on the other test, now your brain might know already that the midpoint between 70 and 80 is 75. But how do we get there? What's the math behind that? Now you might understand too that all we have to do is add these two values and divide by the number of values there were. We're going to add them and divide by two. Now that sounds like you're finding the average, but you're actually finding the median between two values. We're going to do that similarly between the 6 and the 18. So if I just add the 6 and the 18 and then divide by 2, just write it in, in this format, we're going to get 24 divided by 2. So the median point was 12. And in fact, 12 is 6 away from 6. And then again, another 6 from 12 would be 18. So it makes sense. Now let's take a look at this on a Cartesian plane, let's say. So if we had a line segment, maybe starting over here, I'll put a point here. We'll just call that A. And then we come over here to the right hand side and I'll just point a point semi randomly here and we'll call that B. What if I wanted to know the midpoint between these two points? It's nice that it's on a graph, it's on a grid so we can count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are 11 squares between these. And so I know that there should be maybe five and a half squares on each side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a half. So it's going to end up somewhere around here, which looks to be about negative 0.5. But let's do that mathematically. This is a horizontal line, did that on purpose. We only have to worry about the x values because we're only going from left to right to find the halfway point between them. If I'm at an x value of negative 6, we would say, okay, negative 6. And if I'm at an x value of 5, let's add those and divide by 2. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1 and negative 1 divided by 2 is in fact negative 0.5 and so my midpoint is at negative 0.5 but that's just the x values. What if I what if I needed to find the midpoint of some y values as well? Okay, so let's let's continue from b and let's go down here to negative 4 and let's call that point c. And uh, well, let's change up color here. Let's go blue. So let's go from b down to c and let's find its midpoint. So if we were to go from B to C, and I know that uh, this is a Y value of 6, okay, and this is a Y value of negative 4, so let's add 6 and negative 4, and we'll divide by 2. So that's 2 on the, in the numerator, that's 2 on the top, and 2 on the bottom. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and so my midpoint for that, my midpoint, the halfway point is at 1. And then we can get even more complicated. So let's do the diagonal now from A down to C. Hmm, how do I find its midpoint? And counting these squares would be much less fun. And then we have to re recognize the fact that when I did the midpoint for the purple line from A to B, it was only the X values that mattered. The Y values were the same. We didn't really care. And then when I did the blue value, the blue line here from B to C, the x value was 5 the entire time, so we really only cared about the y value. Here on the green line, I'm going to need to take care of both the x and the y value. The purple dealt with the x values only. The blue dealt with the y values only. You can probably see where I'm going with this. As we continue on to our green one and we want to find the midpoint, let's call midpoint M. So I'll use a capital M. I'll use a nicer looking capital M. That's arguably not nicer. And what we're going to do is we're going to combine our purple and our blue work here to come up with a midpoint that works, that has an x value, 
and a y value. So I'm creating a point with an x and a y for my a and my c that is the midpoint. Uh, so my x values, let's get the x values. So my x value for a is negative 6, and my x value for c is 5. It's the same work that we did up here. And my y values, okay, my y value for a is 6, and my y value for c is negative 4. And it's the same work I did in the blue up top. And so I have created my midpoint. It's at negative 0.5 or negative a half and one, positive one. And that'll be the midpoint on that green line, negative a half and one right in there. So we could label that if we wanted to as M, negative a half, one. And that's it, that's the midpoint of a line segment. It has an equation. If you wanted to see a formal equation, I'll do another example here, but here's your formal equation for the midpoint. But you don't really have to memorize an equation like this when you realize that all you're doing is finding the median of the x's, the median of the y's, or the middle or average of the x's and the y's. You could recreate this equation anytime if you happen to forget. And if you think you get it and you think that that's enough for you, uh, you don't need to go any further in this video. You're welcome to stop the video now and move on to some practice questions. But I would like to do a slightly more complicated example here. I'm going to use this triangle. I used this in a previous video. And what I would like to do is talk about a median line. So we're going to discover, what I'd like to do is, is discover the equation of the median line from B. Let's do from B. From point B. And I just sort of picked that at random. And that's why I have this reminder here that the equation of a line in slope y intercept form or gener general form or whatever you want to call this, uh, equation of a line is right here. y equals mx plus b. And some, some other countries say y equals mx plus c. So it just depends on what you use for your y-intercept. So the first thing we're going to need to do is discuss this idea of a median line. A median line is a line that goes from a point, and in this case I'm going from b, to the midpoint of the line across from it. So there's going to be some magic spot. I'm going to sort of visually assume that it's there. Um, I, I do know what it is, but let's just pretend I think it's there. And that's going to be hard to discover. I mean, that spot is not on a, a nice whole number value. And so we're going to use some math to figure out where that midpoint is. So we need to discover, we need to discover the midpoint of AC. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to discover the midpoint of AC. And we have an equation for that. So we're going to take the x values of the points in question. Now the points in question are A and C. A lot of people get confused and they use B. I don't need to use B for this. I need the midpoint of AC. So negative 4 and 3 are the values I'm going to add and divide by 2. And then my Y values, that's a negative 2 and 7. And so I'll add those and divide by 2. And my midpoint for this is at 1 half, negative 1 half specifically, seems to be on my brain as I think that was the value in our previous example. And this one's going to be 5 over 2, 5 over 2. And so this is, you know, if you like the decimal values, negative 0.5 and 2.5. Let's take a look at this. Negative 0.5, so that's negative 0.5 right there, and 2.5 right there. So I was close. I was close. So the real median line is here. Great. I'm done the question. Well, unfortunately, not really. They wanted the equation. They wanted the equation of that blue line. All right, so anytime you want to start getting an equation, you need to find the slope. So let's let's do that. Let's do slope. Lowercase m for slope. Slope is rise over run. And what are we calculating the slope to and from? Well, we're calculating the slope from the b value to the m value, or vice versa. And this is negative 0.5, 2.5. So let's calculate that slope. Let's do our y values. 2.5 take away 1. And let's do our x values. Negative 0.5, negative 0.5 take away 5 right there, take away 5. Perfect. All right, so 2.5 take away 1 is 1.5. Negative 0.5 take away 5, negative 5.5. So we're going to have a negative slope. And we're going to want to simplify this. You know, if you want to see this done to simplify it, I kind of go like this. I say, okay, well, let's get rid of the decimal. It's just 15 over 55. How many 5s go into each? 
So we get 3 and 11. And that's our slope, negative 3 over 11. Not a, not a very pretty slope. It doesn't have to be a pretty slope. And so we've got part of our equation of that line already. So I think my equation of my line is negative 3 over 11 x plus some sort of b value, some sort of y intercept, which is going to be 2 point something, but I, I don't really know what that 2 point something is. You can also check to make sure you know your slope makes sense. It makes sense for it to be a negative slope. So how do I find that y intercept? In order to find that y intercept, I need to plug something in for x and y, and I have two points I can do that with. I have point m, which has decimal values in it, so gross. And I have point B, which has whole numbers in it. Yay, whole numbers. So let's plug those whole numbers in. And I've got a Y value of 1. We've got an X value of 5. And, you know, this isn't exactly, you know, beautiful math, but it'll do the job. So 15 over 11. And so we're going to add the 15 over 11 onto both sides. So my right hand, my left hand side, I might just change that. I might just change that now to be 11 over 11. That's the whole number one. I'll just add that to both sides and get 26 over 11 as my B value. And if you wanted to simplify that into decimal format or something like that, that's 2.36 approximately. But I'm just going to leave it as the fraction. So I've got my equation now. So my equation of the median line is negative 3 elevenths x plus 26 over 11. 26 over 11, like I said, that's 2.36. 2.36 is roughly what I see on my graph. So this looks like we're pretty darn close to where this is supposed to be. My slope is negative, so that's correct. And away we go. So the midpoint of a line can also be used to find other things, things like a perpendicular bisector, which I'll do another video on perpendicular bisectors separately. And I'd like you to go and, and practice some math on this now. Find some questions somewhere. Practice this because finding the midpoint on a line is pretty crucial uh, along with slope and these other things. If you want to move forward in math, it actually lends itself to all sorts of other analytic geometry. I hope that made sense. Please feel free to check out my other videos and have a great day.